This tree is commonly known as a shad blow bush. Southern New Englanders have known for many years that when it flowers in early April, the shad are beginning to move up the Connecticut and Farmington rivers. The fish is similar to the salmon in that it is born in fresh water, migrates to the sea, and then returns to its birthplace to spawn and die. Because so many fish fill the rivers each year, shad became a traditional staple in the diet of early Connecticut people. It was a basic food and one that could be easily preserved by being salted. But by winter, people probably began to tire of it. Even until the 30s, shad was harvested with nets in great numbers by moonlighting farmers who hoped to stock their larders and sell the rest for a small but extra profit. But now the shad has become a game fish, largely due to the efforts of the Windsor Rod and Gun Club. This organization felt a hook shad provided fair excitement for a sport fisherman, as well as a tasty meal. So in May of 1955, they promoted this idea by inaugurating the first shad derby, which attracted more than 300 participants. Probably many were pleased to have a formal excuse just to go fishing and at the same time enjoy the scenery along the bank and the company of a neighbor. The peace found by the river in the evening still seems to attract many people, but fishing is no longer the sole interest of those who organize and attend the derby. The arrival of the shad now provides an excuse for a town festival composed of many different events. The following photograph is reproduced here courtesy of the Windsor Historical Society. It reveals that a parade and related festivities have been as much a part of our local heritage as the shad fishing along the river has been.
The 1975 Shad Derby Festival drew between 30 and 40,000 people. Here, Mayor John Welch is shown leading the start of the parade with General Chairman Ernest Weisberg. Accompanying them are representatives of the four local organizations which have recently formed a Shad Fest Bureau. These people from the Chamber of Commerce, the JCs, the Junior Women's Club, and the Rod and Gun Club have been responsible for so successfully organizing and coordinating the entire week of events. The number of groups that participated in this parade show the amazing amount of support this community is willing to put forth for the Shad Derby. Local and area marching groups competed for prizes in that category, and colorful floats that were entered by local businesses and services provided interesting visual effects to accompany the good marching music. Here, the queen of the parade, Jane Curlick, is shown with her court atop one of these beautiful floats. day, most people were busy celebrating on the green, enjoying their boned and baked shad, and viewing the parade. But Mr. Joseph Cardillo, president of the Windsor Rod and Gun Club, was busy cleaning many of those good fillets, and here shows several interested onlookers how to do their own. That's a fish fillet. Over the years, the activities that are now part of the Shad Derby have become extremely important to those who participate in the festival. But to many, the idea of catching Shad and enjoying the arrival of the warm weather is still the best way to celebrate.